Well, I don't know if we're going to be able to play it, though. I think we should. Okay. In the background while everyone gets ready. I think everyone is ready except us. <laughs> it's better than Jeffrey. How do we, can we play? I'll make sure that I share the link because it's really beautiful. Okay. Maybe we can play it at the end. Yeah. Let's, should we start? Are we ready to start? Are we ready? Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much. The name of this talk is Beyond Inclusion, Doing the Right Thing, Drupal style. And there are a, there is a link to the slides, should you care to choose to follow that. We have our slides set up. and So Nikki had a QR code that would have been very helpful for you. And I was like, why do we need a QR code to the slides and the slides? That doesn't make sense. And now we're here. And I understand why she did that. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my fault. I apologize. <laughs> there is a code, though, for you to join our survey to level set who's in the room and what your belief is about what inclusion means to you. So if you can't reach this with your camera, maybe reach your, show your hand if you can get to it. You could also navigate to menti.com and the code is 54315485. How many people have used Mentimeter before? Okay, so if this doesn't work out, it's okay. It's okay. But if you hop over to menti.com and it does work out, even if we get a few responses, it's fine. We're going to be fine. Let's get this going because I want to get to the chatty chat bit at the end. So today what we're going to cover is introductions to both of us. You saw some of our introductions this morning. Definitions about what we're talking about. The resources available to all of us today as well as the sticky situations discussion, a bit more open discussion at your tables. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was fast. <laughs> and so I, I think there are three, three options for words. And we're just looking for like single word answers about what inclusion means to you and the feelings that you get when, when you think about the word. Are we OK? So everybody's mentied? <laughs> oh, it's not working? It's not working? OK, well, we're moving on. <laughs> OK. <laughs> All right, let's throw down on some quick introductions. Nikki, would you like to go first? Yeah, certainly. Monica Deer on Drupal.org, technical project manager at Lullabot. Two cats, that's my fun fact, Howl and Kona. We adopted Howl last year, and I love sci-fi recommendations, so please give me those, as well as your historical fiction. Okay. And I am Faye Loren. Um, I do have a dog. People call him my fur baby. I'm like, no, no, that's my mentor um, and my roommate. Uh, his name is Winston. Um, I'm also neurodivergent, neurodiverse, or neurospicy, whatever you would like to do. So I'll read half of most books. Um, and I play a whole bunch of instruments if you qualify playing an instrument just a week. Try it a week, usually. <laughs> All right, so before we get too much into this, I wanted to throw out some uh, definitions. So inclusion, it's a very interesting word. As, um, as I navigate the community as a diversity and inclusion lead, I sometimes see situations where people confuse inclusivity with meaning everybody gets to have an opinion. They do not mean the same thing. So in the context of this discussion, especially, we are gonna kind of lean towards the second definition here. So I know it's a lot of words on the screen, so I'm just gonna read it out. Uh, so the practice or policy of providing equal access to opportunities and resources for people who might otherwise be excluded or marginalized, such as those who have physical, intellectual disabilities and members of other minority groups. So, and if you're a visual learner, here's another great example. This is from the Interaction Institute. Um, Nikki pointed out something really interesting. Do you want to? Well, first of all, as a description it? for yeah. those of you who are listening in, there's 
three people, an adult, a medium-sized child, and a very small child, and they're all on equal-sized crates, and they're attempting to look over a fence at the baseball game. That's on the first slide, which says equality. On the second slide, on the right, <laughs> is equity, where it's the same number of crates, as you'll notice, but they've been configured so that the smallest person, purple shirt on the far right, is able to see over the fence. The middle person has one crate, and they can also see over the fence. And then there's the adult who can already see over the fence. It doesn't need that extra. And I know <laughs> she, Faye, she told me also that there's a version <laughs> where they just punched down the fence. Yes. I'm like, that's I. Can we next time? Well, next time. <laughs> that might be a different conversation. So our differentiation <laughs> is between equality versus equity. And I do want to bring up that intersectionality is also a very large part of this conversation. It's, it's not just women. It's not just black women. It's everybody. It's not just black people. It's not just women. It's black women. And that was the an origin of thinking through things through an intersectional lens. OK. So, uh, how many people have heard about the big eight identities? Okay, a few. Um, I do want to point out that this is not meant to be comprehensive. So there are other things that we might have that cause us to experience, um, uh, have marginalized experiences or, or um, to experience oppression, but these are just sort of the big the big ones. So physical attributes is another example. Sometimes um, political views, that kind of thing, can also make us stand. I'm having trouble with words today. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but uh, I, th I think perhaps you understand what I'm, what I'm getting at. It's not everything. Um, and this one is my favorite quote. Mm. Do you want to What you share? permit, you promote. And I love this quote because I very firmly believe that any small action that we take in the world can have ripples of effect around us. And so sometimes, even if I'm only feeling safe or able or like I have the bandwidth to do something very, very small, I still think it's important to do something. So every action matters, no matter how small. And this may be something to as strong as emailing a CEO of a company, or it may be something as small as putting an emoji on somebody's remark inside Slack. And I know in the thick of it, both of us has often felt that even the small distinction that somebody is listening and is responding to you can make the difference. I can definitely, yes, that resonates. I have sometimes posted things in the diversity and inclusion Slack channel and nobody even has an emoji response. And I'm like, oh my gosh, am I okay here? Am I, how is this being received? But if one person, just one person puts a little thank you or a thumbs up or a little heart or something, I'm like, okay, I, I have approval from at least one community member. And that actually feels sometimes really big to me. So. Small so things can I'll talk have about big impact. How we got here. So yeah. those of us in the room, uh, can I just see also a show of hands if you've been in the Drupal community for quite some time, maybe over five years, ten years, yeah. So this is what I've noticed. I've only been coming to DrupalCons for a few years, but uh, one is that all of the perspectives are valued and valuable. I do think that in terms of the way that we contribute code, say if, like say there's a code commit. Folks are very open to giving feedback and constructive criticism. There's a lot of this sense of have the idea out and then have everybody interact with the idea. And sometimes this doesn't necessarily translate to feeling great on a human level if it's not like a code commit where you do want all those conversations. You want it to be picked apart so that you can have it be better, right? But maybe Faye or I do not want to be picked apart in order to be made better. So there's a lot of discussion, a lot of collaboration. There's very strongly held opinions in this community. So if you're new to the community, you can also raise your hand. That is uh, something to just be aware of. And again, valued and valuable. Oftentimes, though, I have found that people sometimes hold a grudge and or think there's unfinished business with receipts. And that can sometimes get in the way of a path forward. So Faye and I have talked about this. Rather than oppositional, we want to try and work together. Or meet somebody and where they're at, where they're moving, and move forward together. Caught all these points. Yeah. Oh. Okay. First, do no harm. <laughs> so, 10 minutes in. All right. 
All right, a little time check. So there are kind of two sides to this. When there are crunchy situations that we have to navigate, whether that is a, only involving a few people or whether perhaps that is involving a large portion of our community, which does happen um, at times, I think that it's really important to pause and just check in. And so I'm gonna have two perspectives here and the first one, the first one is uh, inspired by, by Nikki. Do you wanna, you explain this? Oh yes, I thought I would be a doctor prior to getting into tech until I realized I don't feel comfortable inside the hospital environment with sick people and injuries. So, but the doctor's oath, the physician's oath is to first do no harm. And so th I think that's a very good baseline. Like, I'm not here to hurt you. You are not here to hurt me. We're here to address a problem. But sometimes we may want to jump to holding my opinion so strong to override yours. And let's take a step back, like Faye says. Let's stop, check in with ourselves, see what it is we're trying to accomplish, and think about the action and how it impacts the other people around us. But first, yeah. do no harm. So just a couple brief points about um, maybe things that we could consider when we think about our position in our communities or in, in social spaces um, when it comes to crunch, when it comes to conflict, before we take action. So uh, lead with empathy. This one's, this one's great. Doesn't necessarily mean lead other people, but also lead the conversation with empathy. Um, how many people are either developers or project managers? Okay, cool, so here's an example. Uh, as a developer, sometimes you get to the end of a project and it's kind of stressful and the project manager's needs and the developer's needs may not be harmonious. The project manager is putting pressure on the developer to get things done faster. The developer is feeling really stressed because there just isn't humanly enough time to get all of the features in. How many people have been in a situation like this? end of the project can get pretty stressful. So as a developer, when I walk into this situation, a lot of the time, the first thing that I say to the project manager, are you doing okay? Because this completely changes the tone of the entire conversation that I am about to have. I'm not on the opposing end anymore. I'm well and truly on the project manager's side, I care about you as a human being. If I'm stressed on a project, you're probably stressed on a project because you know what, ultimately, we're both trying to launch this website. And so sometimes leading the conversation with empathy can be really, really powerful. Advocate for skill building to supplement change. Uh, this one's fun. Um, I actually don't like conflict. I don't know if anybody here loves conflict, but I'm always looking for, for ways that I can kind of address things in, in less direct ways. Things that, anyways, it'll be a little, a little bit less emotionally draining for me. So a really great example um, of a workshop that I ran at my current company. Um, you know, my manager at, at one point was like, well, what kind of feedback should we be, what kind of feedback do you like? I'm like, well, we need to talk about feedback. And so I ran a little workshop on um, communication styles and the ways that we as individuals like to receive feedback and how that differs culturally. And it got us all really thinking about the importance of framing things in a way that will be meaningful to the other person. Now, if we had a lot of conflict where, you know, I'm asking you for something and you're not registering that that's what I'm asking and then you're getting frustrated, something like that could be really helpful. So instead of getting frustrated with people and trying to change their behavior or, you know, getting upset at them because they're not doing the thing that you need them to do, Sometimes it's possible to take a little step back and go, maybe we could focus on skill building together and grow together as a team by learning new things instead of burning ourselves out with frustration. And impact versus intent. Um, I know that a lot of people have very strong feelings about this one at times. I will, I will share my personal perspective. I personally believe 
that uh, intent does matter, but it really, it doesn't matter the most. So for me, if I'm trying to decide, hmm, am I gonna put the emotional energy into reparations with this other person when they have harmed me? It's gonna make a really big difference to me if I feel like they want to put the work in too. And sometimes when people didn't intend, they go, oh, but I didn't mean to do harm. Uh, I'm like, I don't feel like my energy is well spent here. So it's really important, I believe, if you have caused harm, and sometimes I'm that person, I'm not perfect. Sometimes I have impact on people around me in ways that I didn't want to happen. But when a human being shows up and doesn't get defensive and just acknowledges the harm and listens to the other person, it really makes a very big difference in how the rest of that conversation about reparations can go. If you wall up and go, well, I didn't mean to, it's not my fault, um, that's kind of the end of the conversation, right? Reparations aren't really likely to go very well. So I think it's very, very important if somebody says, hey, your actions have caused harm to me or other people in the community or around us, just listen. Yeah. Okay, so that's you as a human being and the effect that you have on people around you and self-care. Um, find ways to balance. Sometimes I get to the end of the day and I'm like, oh, I actually haven't spent 15 minutes doing anything not stressful today. And so sometimes it's possible to say, okay, I'm gonna spend two hours working on this really hard, stressful project and then the next two hours, and sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's not possible. But I think it's really important to be mindful of the balance of where we're putting our energy and, uh, oh, we're already talking about setting boundaries. Um, that's a whole other workshop that we're not gonna get into today. Um, there are lots and lots of resources available or if you wanna come and talk to me about <laughs> boundaries in the workplace, I love talking about stuff like that. Um, but I don't wanna get into it today, just wanna point at it. Uh, what is easier to understand in the context of this session, think about what is and is not within our control. So often as human beings, we can get really frustrated about things that we don't have a lot of control over. Um, I can be mad at how blue the sky is all day, it's not gonna change. Um, but there are things that I can control, and so I think also it's very important to check in uh, when we are feeling frustrated and exhausted and burning out. Um, I may not be able to control the thing that is exhausting me directly, but there are almost always things that we can do, even very small things that we can do to sort of redirect our energy, which is the next point, um, and make sure that we are, uh, not, not trying to change things that can't easily be changed. Um, and I, I use the metaphor of a black hole for this one. Recognize where you are putting your energy, especially in larger sort of community conflicts or larger kind of systemic problems in, in the world that we have to navigate at times. Um, it can, it, we can sometimes put our energy into what I call a black hole. It's very similar to Think about what is and isn't in your control. If, if you are expending all of your energy in, and into something that cannot be changed, you are going to exhaust yourself. And so I just wanna say it's really important. Um, oh yeah, and networks of support. I'm a very self-reliant person. Do we have any other like radically self-reliant people who maybe don't think to ask for help as their first solution? Um, yeah, yeah, there's a few of us. I think there's probably a few more that are like, I'm not gonna put my hand up. <laughs> I could probably ask for help if I wanted to. I just don't need it. Um, that's me, <laughs> that's my narrative. But uh, yeah, sometimes, especially when there are like community-wide issues and really heavy things happening um, in, in the community or in our, you know, our, our local communities, it's really important to just pause and you know, we don't even have to lean into those networks, but identify them. Identify them, and maybe lean in, but identify them. 
and celebrate every win. I started doing this, I was like, that's kind of dorky. And then I actually did it. At the end of every day, I had a practice of thinking like, okay, name one win today. And I noticed a pretty dramatic difference. So in difficult times, when you get to the end of the day, identify just, just one win. Thanks, Faye. So we'll go through some of the existing resources on the ground, and there's four that I wanted to make sure to share with you, and then we're going to go into our situations. Sound like a good time check? And then for those of you who did participate in the mentee, these are some of the words that showed up. I apologize for not letting them sh sh show, but it says accepting, accessibility, multi-ethnic, equity, acceptance, open, belonging, non-judgmental, multi-language and togetherness. Oh, those are really positive. That makes me happy. So first of all, the Drupal Code of Conduct. Some of you at the opening remarks saw the Drupal Convention, the Drupal Con Code of Conduct. This Code of Conduct is for anybody participating in the Drupal community. We, it's how we expect people to behave in the community and participate. And as a note, uh, if you, not every, every person is welcome and valued and valuable. Not every behavior is welcome. So go ahead and scan that and keep it on your phone. This has been thought through by the community working group. Next week, did you, sorry, did you get that? Okay, next is the Drupal incident form. So let's say that you witness somebody not interacting with the code of conduct. The incident report form is the next aspect of that, and so if something's made you uncomfortable, if something's made you feel like you can't participate in Drupal anymore, this is definitely, if you don't even know if this incident belongs on the incident report form, please do report it. We have a trained group who are participating in the community working group. They're trained to evaluate items. They do have policies and processes, and I want to make sure that you know this is private and anonymous, and there's also a clear pathway to resolution for that issue. So please do mark that incident report form, any. Oh, yeah, I would just say, um, it, I think it's a really good idea to just read through the community working group's description page on, I think there should be a, a link in there. Um, they have very clear information about their policies and processes and the steps that they go through after a report is made. Um, I, I learned about this because I actually had to report something, mm -hmm. and so some of these notes, um, and I won't, I'm obviously, I'm not gonna get into the details of it, but some of these notes are the things that I experienced. Um, you know, I was thinking about, like, should I report this? Should I not report this? Like, what if there are people who work with this other person and, it probably just feels like asking for help, to be honest. But I had a lot, I had a hard time with it. I had a hard time with it, and I decided to reach out to uh, the conflict resolution team, and they were amazing. Um, and I am so so grateful for for their support and the work that they do in the community. And so that's why we wanted to make sure that we mention it in in this presentation today. So. And then in terms of Drupal diversity and inclusion, if you are not yet on the Slack, so there's a Slack that you can access through drupal.org slash Slack. Some of you are new to this. There's a diversity inclusion channel. There's also a website, drupaldiversity.com, and DDI, of which Faye is very involved with, is a safe space for discussing community-specific or systemic issues that affect marginalized and underrepresented voices. And the distinction is we do not have training or sp specific, you know, we're not necessarily equipped to, su to support personal conflict. We are not there for your personal conflict. Okay, so yes. Right. If you need a place that's not from the governance side or something that doesn't feel healthy for the community, this is a good place to begin that conversation. If you have ideas that need refining before um, you roll them out, do take that to the DA as well. Oh, yeah, or or bring it to the diversity and inclusion Slack channel because we're also there participating <laughs> in the DA and have learned a lot about the process on the board and how changes in governance happen, um, and so that's becoming a really great place to have those conversations. Um, as and well. Faye and I are both your 
uh, at-large members on the board. So this is a rotating position. The Drupal Association is a 501c3 nonprofit. There's a two-year term. The term is opening in November. If you are in this room, if you are participating in Drupal, you belong in that seat. I am aging out and Faye has another year. So we do have an election in November. The at-large member self-nominated. You qualify as being a Drupal participant. Everyone votes if they're a member of the association. So do reach out to us. Uh, you qualify, yes, you. And again, you'll start to see notifications about that in October, November. Reach out to us at any time. Faye, Lauren, or Monica Deer. Ready to talk shop? <laughs> I, I mean, are you ready? I'm not are ready. Are you ready? It's scary. This is, this is your time to shine. This is. <laughs> So yeah. we did have, again, we tried to do the mentee to get some participation from you, but since we're in small enough groups, I wanted to walk through a few situations, get the temperature check from the room, and then if you had suggestions, feel free to come up and share them with the group. And these are real world, so are, are we ready? I, just also to make sure, this may become quite re-traumatizing especially if you've been through a situation like this and so it's perfectly fine if you would like to leave or if you don't want to participate or just listen or don't speak that's perfectly all right um, my sense is we don't have a lot of time to dig into the details but we want to raise them because we are responsive and we know that you all are dealing with situations like these four and others every single day so first one I object to working on this particular project. I work at a potential part of the company that is potentially not supportive of me having that objection. Or I may work at a place that allows me to opt out with the conscientious objector list, right? So there's a lot going on in terms of what you might object to. I might object to the subject matter. I might object to the way that that company spends their money. We're not gonna name names, right? We also uh, definitely object if there's harm being done to a specific group based on the work of that organization. I'm not gonna be a maker for a group that is gonna actively be against Filipino women, right? So I would like the opportunity to object uh, one of the main key takeaways I want to give to those of you who are in leadership in the room, if you're a project manager, if you have the ear of your leadership, is if there's a way for you to have an actual written objector policy into your documentation. And also, don't be, you know how we have our sunflower, like don't be challenging people on why don't you want to work on this project. That's totally not uh, what is you need as a person. We just want to have the ability for somebody to opt out. So uh, for individuals working in the situation who may not have a written objection policy or a manager or a main person who's helping you, su supporting you in that, please find an ally who can help you and come again to the DDI, the Drupal Diversity and Inclusion Space for discussion, support. There's jobs in the DDI space for people well, who may a, be more- Yeah, there's a jobs channel. More value aligned to you. And I thought we could take a bit of a break and you could talk in your small groups. If you don't have anybody at your table, please turn to somebody near. So yeah, I just wanna take a minute. And when Nikki and I were talking about, um, about these situations and she was like, oh, we have these, a good solution is a conscious objector policy. And I was like, oh, when, oh what? I've never worked at a company like that. Um, or maybe not until recently. <laughs> uh, I'd been a contractor, I'd worked at a lot of different agencies and, and I had never had a good HR support. Um, and I know that there are a lot of us who don't have that and, and you can't just quit a job and walk away, right? Um, there's a lot of reasons, especially for marginalized people. So I just wanna say, I think there's a very clear differentiation in this discussion about people who are supported effectively by their companies, by their organizations, people who aren't supported, but even though the systems are meant to be there, and, and companies that are just, they just don't even have an HR person, especially large or smaller companies rather, they don't even have that as an option. So Nikki, how would you like to organize this a bit? Maybe yeah, I'd like to people. put three minutes on the clock. Just discuss with your folks. If it's not you, if you came, somebody junior maybe came to you and asked 
what you what they could do. Yeah. That's so terms of solutions. And then if you would like to, we can have people come up and discuss. Yeah. So take a few minutes, and then the thing that I will ask you to share is takeaways for leadership. Either if you're a leader and you have a point of advice that we haven't talked about, could you share that? Or tips for individuals. If you are an individual and there is a tool or a resource or an avenue that you could take or have taken that would help you if you've been in this situation, what does that look like? So I wanna keep things a little bit positive and solution oriented, but three minutes. Okay, maybe 15 more seconds, you can wrap it up. Okay. <laughs> All right, come back to me. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so how many people kind of resonate with the situation where they've been asked to do something at their work and they thought, I don't think I'm okay with that. I don't wanna do, it. okay, a few people, a few people. All right, so key takeaways for leadership. It made me very happy to hear, oh yeah, we wanna implement a conscious objector policy just like Lullabot does, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, you should talk to Nikki. Um, so do you have, does anybody have feedback that they'd like to share, maybe? Yeah, other, other points that came up that would be valuable for people in positions of leadership. Yeah. I'll turn around. <laughs> Actually face people. So uh, I've worked with a lot of agencies and I think one of the more challenging things that I faced personally was 
working with an agency that worked with a lot of military organizations. So whether it's myself or other people that I work with, the question then is, how do I say something? Who do I talk to? Does this change the profitability of my organization? What does this mean to my employment? I know there's the resource juggle, but those are all the questions that as an employee I would face. And you could see the tension on some of my coworkers when faced with that. But that's just one example. Does yeah. anyone have another? It sounds like even just having clear systems, structures, maybe role scoping even would help people, individuals understand, and that's something that has to come from leadership, like leadership has to do the role scoping exercises and then communicate that out. So yeah, I, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, was there another one, any other pointers for leadership? Or if you're in a leadership position, or is there something that you'd like to share that is just really effective at, at your organization? Okay. And yeah. as an individual navigating this, um, if you're an individual contractor or you aren't supported by your company, was there anything that came up? I did hear from one of the tables, Faye, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, leaving is actually an answer. So unfortunately, and fortunately we're in tech where Drupal, you can find work. Uh, sometimes you have to walk away and that can be quite painful uh, we all of us we need our jobs right we want to provide for whatever it is that we need to provide for and but sometimes if the situation is actually entirely too bad I was at an organization that did have a hire that was not good and probably six of the women left right so what does that mean to the organization that's an immediate feedback loop to the organization that oh maybe we uh, didn't need to elevate this person into position of power we didn't need to have policies that supported that person maybe we should be re rethinking and so those of you also who are hiring consider doing quarterly pulse checks checking in on your people understanding where the headwinds may be so that you know when somebody's new they have a outsize impact, especially on smaller teams. So that's something to be consideration. Of. Yeah, I would I would elaborate on that because you know this is something I've experienced and something that I've talked to a lot of people in the community about. Being able to leave your job is a privilege. It's a huge privilege. Um, there's a lot of vulnerability in the unknown, um, but there are also a lot of other reasons why um, you might not be able to like just pick up and walk away from your job. Um, maybe you are working in a country that, uh, that you don't have citizenship in and you just don't have the option of, of walking away because that company sponsored you to be there or um, yeah, you know, there, there could be there could be a lot of other. <laughs> well, there are a lot of examples. Um, just even job security, and there are a lot of other um, complicating factors that, that so can get in. We do invite you to join us in Drupal Diversity. Continue to discuss some of these. Yeah. Those so what places. I yeah exactly. So what I would say about this is that coming to the diversity and inclusion space is a really good start. So when I decided it was time to leave my company, I started looking at, oh, who are the companies who are sponsoring DEI events, who are really DEI forward? Who do I know who's active in the DEI space or in you know spaces like this? And are there companies sponsoring them to put the time and energy into that space because that sends me a message of value alignment and it helps me understand who do I talk to and how do I start networking to figure out where there are opportunities where I can go where I'm going to not have the same experience over again so let's move on to situation two so let's say and these are real I am getting slack messages from a developer on a partner team maybe and they're becoming increasingly inappropriate and whatever that means to you so this is not my company it's not my colleague or co coworker. it's maybe my clients developer <laughs> so first of all personally individually right like take a breath take a step back document and then we have a basis to start taking action but I would also put three minutes you can talk about some other inappropriate situations and what you would mentor your colleague or your friend if this started happening for them. Sound like a plan? 
gets increasingly stickier. Yeah, so just to, just to clarify, um, the situation is intrapersonal conflict or misaligned with someone who is not yes. at your company. Sure. Or at your or, or at your company. So either. I, well, okay. Let's <laughs> let's say somebody's giving you Kay. some inappropriate Slack messages. Okay. Oh, somebody you have a professional relationship with. Maybe they're your but client. Your they're your partner. Their uh, channel partner. Whatever it is. Big pause, right? <laughs> so yeah, I have three minutes on the clock. You can discuss. Okay, 15 seconds. Okay, so come back to me with my inappropriate Slack message from my developer. Yeah. Anybody have any suggestions for the leadership at their organization that they would? There's nothing you can do about that is one suggestion. Yeah. I'll just a little weird hearing my voice on this microphone. What I was talking about over there was, you know, a coworker, you know, who was seemingly cool with me, like, um, you know, being non-binary. I mean, like there wasn't a big deal made, but, you know, when, you know, he left the team, you know, I was, um, you know, like snubbed on the exit email. So like, it, you know, when I, when you hear other people get that email and then like I didn't, it was, it was pretty obvious. Nothing you can, like I said, what are you going to do at that point? Right. 
And sometimes the trash takes out itself. So it's succinct. I like that. So want to make sure. So when I, I talked with one table, so the um, the documentation trail. So I'll tell you with animal control and the little dog at 411 here on who comes into my chicken coop the first time a week and a half ago. There's a picture on the nest and I sent that to animal control. Yes, we'll work on that, said Sergeant. The second time they're like, oh, we really will work on this. And this is what time did they come? And here's the picture of them off leash. And then the third time, Saturday night, 10, 20 p.m., here's the next video. So documentation, documentation, documentation. I would invite you to just put a little note every day of what's happening and take that to HR if you have HR. If you do not have HR, that's more of a triple incident report form. Uh, another other outside supporters okay and yes as mentioned sometimes there's not a great solution um maybe it's about removing ourselves from the situation or waiting for that i mean my my tip for leadership would be side with your team yes. like side with your people your people matter they're your work family and if you don't show up for your team you don't protect your team what kind of a message does that send to other people on the team. Is that really a place? Is that really, you know, so the, the term psychological safety was mentioned. Um, yeah, psychological safety in the workplace is only becoming increasingly important. And maybe we can be that psychologically safe people for each other. So let's start thinking of each other as people that we can share these things with and continue forward. Okay, we do have just a few more minutes, so I don't know if we'll have time to sh go into subgroups, but I did want to have a situation, for example, somebody sharing information publicly that you actually didn't want to. So number one, get consent. Don't assume that somebody wants you to tag their photo in the LinkedIn profile. Like ask, ask and be sure to abide if they say no. Also consider if your information, what is the ramification of your information? Oftentimes it's Thursday night, it's late at night, we just wanna get some thoughts out there. Like, take a step back. Maybe you don't need to post to, to, uh, to any of the social media profiles. Maybe you don't need to say anything at all. Make consent a habit. Yes. Oh, and also that difficulty around the concept of freedom of speech is what we wanted to talk about. So you have freedom of speech, but that does not mean freedom from consequences. So, right? Like, don't be surprised if you saying something, not you in the room, but somebody saying something. You're all lovely, I'm sure. <laughs> results in <laughs> something that you didn't want. Like, yeah, your opinion is actually doing harm sometimes to marginalized peoples. So freedom of speech does not mean you get to do harm to others. Freedom of speech does not mean freedom from consequences. Okay, and then in the last public petition circulates, yes, yeah, so this is our last one. So uh, when we worked at Green America, we would often give the target of our campaign a six week time frame. For example, if they're moving to CF to a different kind of refrigeration, we'd tell them, we want you to make this public by a certain timeline. If you don't, then we'll have consequences, right? So our team is working with their team and there's checkpoints along the way and then they change their behavior or they don't change their behavior and the consequences come into play right so there's a there's if there's a difficult position that you or if there's somebody who's in a position that you want to be changing that behavior consider giving them the timeline instead of calling them out immediately give them the stepped kind of like checkpoints if you can also consider when somebody is like publicly <laughs> petitioning against somebody they sometimes want some sort of action like let's understand what the deeper action is and then consider yeah how can we be more empathetic how can we take the time to put ourselves in each other's shoes and how can we day by day step by step learn how to interact with each other with more grace and with more patience empathy and kindness Okay, so thank you for participating in our sticky situations. Again, this is beyond inclusion, doing it Drupal style. We all have an opportunity to work together and make Drupal the best it can be and a home for each of 
uh, each and every one of us. Thank you yeah. for joining us. I would, I would say I invite you to reach out to me. And I don't know how you yes. feel. Um, I'm on Slack. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm all over the interwebs. Please send me a message if you would like to chat about anything or get in touch. Um, I think we were going to put our... St I, anyway, I just forgot. Hi, I have ADHD. Sometimes I forget to put my info on the end of the slide. Yeah, um, thanks. Uh, yeah, and Robot DJs are next. Um, so, oh, she did it. She's just a, she's just a professional. She, let's have a round of applause for Nikki. <laughs> for, and for Faye, and for all of you. Thank you. So I hope you all have a great rest of DrupalCon. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, and we will see you hopefully out in the Next light, hall. bright, and robot DJ area. <laughs> <laughs>